Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, so hopefully we've got a little bit of a quick tip sort of troubleshooting session tonight uh, with Idea Maker. We have a user question um, from Goffman uh, about a failed print, and we're going to see if we can um, come up with a solution for the little conundrum that he's got. Uh, so uh, please consider subscribing and uh, hit the like button on the video uh, if you find this informational or if you like it. Uh, so here we go. Um, so Gothman says, hey, look, I've had my first print failure. I'm at, I failed at layer 57 of 585. Uh, and is there any way an idea maker to sort of easily set up to start printing at a certain layer? Um, uh, quick and dirty uh, answer is no, it's not straightforward. It can be done, and there's some risk involved in it. So we can go through that, and uh, and I'll show you what how I would do it. Now, look, I've I don't think I've ever done it on the printer. I've done it on my CNC router, where you know I've had a failure at a certain certain spot in the G code, and I could go back through pretty easily with uh, with the the tool I use to generate tool paths and start at a particular layer height. Um, to me, that that part's easy. On the, on, the, on the 3D printer side, and especially with Idea Maker, I don't know that I'm as comfortable. So here's what I would do. As a 3D printer, here's what I would do. A, a 3D print person, not as a machine. Um, so if you know you failed at, 50, at layer 57, so what you first need to do is figure out what height that equates to. So grab a set of calipers or... Um, you know, a ruler that's in, that's metric or something like that and uh, and measure that off. So in this case, let's say that 57, uh, layer 57 equated to 25 millimeters. Um, I would, in that case then, scrape that first 10% off the bed and save it, right? Get it off in one good piece and move it to the side somewhere and then uh, and measure it, assuming it's 25 millimeters. Then I would come back over to my original model, that's an idea maker, and I would uh, select it and go to this move button and I would drop it into the bed negative 25 and then I would go back over to my slice and I would just slice it as normal and I would print that remaining 90% and then when that was done right I'd scrape it off glue the two things together um, you know I don't, I don't know what type of material what filament you're using if it's PLA or ABS or whatever but you know, there's lots of good joining solutions out there, including just plain old super glue, right, or epoxy, whatever you want to use. And then um, post-process that that seam line that you've created and sand it, make it smooth, and do whatever. Do your best to hide that. Because no matter which way you go, even if you were able to start the print at a specific layer, I think you're still going to have the potential for, um, you know, clean above that line. I just, I, just doing as many prints as I have in the past. I just think there's, I think even when, when you know, like when, like when power dies or something like that, and printers have that ability to sort of restart after a power failure, I think you've always got a little bit of a weird artifact there. But <clears throat> in any case, this is not my, that's not my call. But this is, that's how I think I would do it. Or since I'm less than 10% of the way through the model, start over. Uh, call, call it a, you know, call it what it is. It's a loss, oaks. Now, if that temp, if your first ten percent equated to something crazy like six or seven hours of a print because this thing's huge, then I get why you'd want to go this route. So that's how I do it: scrape it off, sink the sink the model under the bed, start over. Now, if you want to try and print uh, at a specific um, starting point in the slicer, uh, you still kind of have to do a couple things. So. We already know, let's say 25 millimeters. So you still, in this case, would open up your model. You would still sink it into the bed 25 millimeters, right? And that's step one. Step two is you'd go into your, your slicing template, go to edit, and I would turn off any platform additions. So if you had a skirt there before or a brim or whatever, turn all that off. Because all because if you're gonna leave something on the bed, Right, and we're basically going to trick this to say, um, you know, we're going to we're going to trick this thing to say you're you're printing off the bed when you're really not, right? Um, so I would turn all that stuff off, and then you're going to come over to the um, other tab. Uh, so I'm running uh, 4.3 beta. It should still be in the same position even if you're running the current release. Like 
uh, it should still be here. But down here in this global offset, if you already had something in the X and Y, don't touch those. Leave those the same, right? Because you want your printer to do exactly the same thing it did before, uh, except now you want it to start 25 millimeters higher. So in this case, I'm going to add a global offset of 25 millimeters in my Z. So um, that will basically, in your G code, add that offset at the beginning or close to the beginning. So when it homes onto the front left corner of your bed, I'm assuming you have, I don't know what kind of printer you had, but so when it runs through its home in the front left corner, and now after it's homed, it's gonna add that global offset, 25 millimeters, and then start with the rest of your G code. Um, now keep bear in mind too that your first your first move here is after home, it goes through that um, that nozzle priming sequence. And so you need to be aware of your 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 gantry, your X gantry running across the right. Um, if if when your nozzle's touching the bed, if you don't have let's say a couple of inches or whatever to clear whatever's already existing on the bed, your gantry is potentially going to smack into that model and you're going to lose steps and jack up the printer and all that good stuff. But you have to run through. If, assuming you're pairing back, you have to run through at least the homing sequence so the printer knows where the nozzle is relative to itself, right? Relative to the bed. So you have to run through the homing sequence and then it'll generate that 25 millimeter Z offset that we uh, threw into the other tab here, right? So let's hit okay, let's hit slice. Um, and the way that I like to do, um, I don't think in the preview it's really gonna show it, it may. Okay, there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see now, even though we said you know, in the model, it was looked like it was on the bed. Now we've added that 25 millimeter Z, Z offsite. Um, now, if you just did this with with your whole model without sinking it into the bed first, you're basically gonna let's say you're printing a head, right, or a mask or something like that, and you failed right here, um, and then you said, well, do the same model but just start 25 millimeters higher. Well, then it's just gonna take all this, move it up 25 millimeters, and you have a chin on top of a chin. Right? So you need to sink your model into the bed first to, to basically slice that 25 millimeters off, right? And then apply a Z offset. And there's a couple ways to skin that cap, but that's the most straightforward. So here you can see you're basically printing 25 millimeters in the air. Um, let's see, seam, let's do seam, let's do travel. So um, this, this could potentially work for you. That's a way to do it. Um, the other, the other tool I like to use is, so let's go ahead and export this G-code. Uh, I've done this a couple times in preparation for this, but we're just going to replace. Okay. And there's another there's another tool I like to use uh, for my CNC router, which is ncviewer.com. So it, it reads standard G-code and shows you everything that's happening line by line. So let's open up this. And there's, there's a bunch of wackadoodle junk in here, and it's just how it's interpreting all of this... Uh, stuff up top, right? Anything in blue, it's trying to interpret, but the 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 controller is not processing anything with that semicolon in front of it, right? It's it's just information. So uh, that's why all this extra crapola is in here. But now, as we go down here, right? So you got M21, uh, M140. So we want to get all the way down here. So this little black bar here, it's, it's interpreted, it's, it's rendered like it's an end mill on a router. But this, assume this is your printhead, right? So you're in your front left, ooh, sorry. Uh, let's home this, okay. So this position is your front left home, right, of your printer. And it's so it's going through its home position. Let's. I just did. I, I don't think I did anything there. Okay, so um, so G21, you can't get rid of any of this stuff. Uh, well, you can, but you got to know what the hell you're doing. Um, G21, G90, uh, you need to set the, the printer needs to know it's in millimeters and needs to know it's in absolute positioning, yada, yada, yada. Uh, G29, so this is like a generic bed leveling thing. So if you have a bed leveler, an auto bed leveler that starts at the beginning of every print, turn that off. Right, because you don't want your printer going through a bed leveling sequence. If you've got something sitting on your bed, right, you'll you'll smack into that thing, you'll lose steps, you'll jack up the printer, you'll jack up the print, and 
wasted a bunch of time. So uh, make sure you have any auto bed leveling stuff turned off. And then it goes through its purge thing, right? So it's gonna prime the um, prime the nozzle, uh, and then move up to Z, yada yada yada. So now you can see. Let me zoom out just a skosh, and you'll watch as we as we tick down the lines that black bar is gonna move, right? So it's going through that. It's doing its prime move. Uh, where did it go? It has disappeared. Oh, it's all the way over here. Oh, okay, so that's the prime move. Priming move. Right, you can see that blue line. So it's way back over there. And we'll tab back down. Moves over a little bit, comes back and does it again. <clears throat> so now if we... Where'd it go? So there it is, okay. Then it does a reset, right? Done purging. So you could theoretically, this whole portion, you could get rid of it. Uh, move the Z up a little bit, and then you got your M1000, or 10, uh, 1001, and then here's where uh, the real print starts happening, right? Total number, print time zero, remaining time, uh, layer zero, and there's my global Z offset, but it's a semicolon, so it hasn't really done anything yet. Um, gives you some more information, printing, yada, 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 and then, okay, so here, okay, I'm glad we went through this, because this is where um, something could, could drastically go wrong. Okay, so you've got your model here that's 25 millimeters above the bed. So your G1 F3600 E6.0, so I believe that's a feed rate of 3600 millimeters per minute. Uh, and your extruder is a negative uh, six millimeters. So, right, so it's retracting six millimeters, it's setting a feed rate, and it zooms over here to XY position. So your first move is to zoom over to an XY position. And it's gone way the heck over here. All right, so basically it's starting behind the thing. Now, normally that'd be okay but you have something on the bed. So your your gantry has just blown through your whole model. So um, this is where, and then it moves up 25 millimeters. Watch, boom, now it's moved up 25 millimeters. So that's catastrophic, but it's not um, insurmountable. So that's an easy move here. So we're just gonna add a line. We're gonna change this and we're gonna cut and paste. And then what I like to do is just hit plot again. So now what we can do is if we come over here, uh, so now we're back, we're, we're up a couple lines, right? Let's come down, let's see where we are. So we're back in our, back in the home position right there, right? So feed rate, retract, move up 25 millimeters, right? See that thing just pop up 25 millimeters? And then it moves to its first XY position over here in the corner, right? So theoretically, you have stuff printed down here already, and you're going to print all of this. And so theoretically, you are good to go. It's just going to go through its whole thing and print the whole model and blah, 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 blah. Um, now, that being said, now you can save this, right? So I've got a new version of the file down here saved. That's what you're going to load into your printer because you made a change in here. That's what you're going to load into your printer and run your G code off of that file, not the one that the that um, idea maker made for you. Good luck. I wouldn't do it. Um, I think plastic's cheap, and I think 10% of the print is enough to to call it a wash. But that's just me, and, and I get it. You might have a totally different set of circumstances, and I fully support whatever endeavor you're going through, and I hope it works for you, buddy. Um, and, um, and please let me know which way you go. And I'm, I'm sorry it's taken a, a day or so to, to get back to you on this, so you probably already made some sort of decision. But um, good luck, bro. Uh, let me know. I'll talk to you.